Um, this morning you invited us to uh, take the perspective of the oneness and in the meditation. And um, sometimes that happens. And I wonder uh, why it happens and why it stops happening. You know what I mean? These um, peak experiences that that are distinctly different from normal experiences. Yes, it, it's what William Blake referred to when he said, when the doors of perception are cleansed, everything will appear to yeah. man as it is infinite. So the, the, what, these moments when the, the doors of perception are cleansed, by which he means we're no longer seduced by the apparent evidence of the senses, there are, there are some events, there are some um, objects or events in the world that have the capacity to trigger this cleansing of perception. Yeah. And they are... Uh, um, They are the, the scriptures, the teachings, and works of art. Okay. Those are the those are the the way, but but not just the, those are two common um, experiences: a, a true work of art, a, um, a teaching that that comes from this understanding. But there are other experiences as well. Um, May I describe I, one? Please do. Yeah. Um, that was five years ago in a satsang, and um, so, um, the question arose in me, if everything is changing all the time and transient, what, what is not changing? And then the answer also came, and it, it was, I, I am not changing, I'm always the same. And then... Um, It felt like that also, as if I was immutable and beyond eternity and time is going through me and uh, it had a tremendous emotional impact. Yeah. But it lasted only a few moments because apparently the body couldn't handle this, uh, this impact yeah. and yeah. something cramped and it was gone. Yeah, well, the, that was an example of a, of, of a saying from the from the a line of reasoning that came. Um, what was the question you asked yourself? Um, what happened there, physic uh, physiologically? Why, no, was, why a, was it stopping? No, what? there was a question you started. What, what oh. is it that never disappears, or something? You, you, what was your question? You told us. Mm, you're pointing us to to these. Uh, vantage points, this reality, and it's really obvious. Uh, yes. I think everybody can relate to it and yes. so it's it, not it, happening. It, it, your example is, is a... Um, uh, it can be triggered by a question such as um, what is it that never leaves me? Yeah. If, you, if you ponder that question, what is it that never leaves me? That, that question is if in the right person at the right time that, person, that question will take us directly to our changeless nature. Another person, they hear that question, they just think it's boring and they move on. A, exactly. It has to be... So there are many such questions. Um, but so, so th th those are um, rational questions, but they can also be the equivalent in a visual representation. That would be a work of art. Mm -hmm. So th there can be a, 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 vis a painting... If you look at uh, Cezanne's painting, for instance, th th these are like um, visual representations of self-inquiry, but they don't they don't appeal to our minds. They don't ask the question, uh, "What is it that cannot be removed from me?" They, they engage our perceptions in an exploration. They 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 they, they lead us. Instead of leading us into the distance, into the vanishing point, they lead our attention back and they ask, without formulating the question, they ask the question, what is the nature of the perceiver? Yeah. So it can also be precipitated by a work of art. You listen to one of Bach's fugues, it has the same, the same power. But there are other experiences too. Um, in fact, in the sort of advert for my new book, the, um, in the new book I think I, I describe several such experiences, grief, for instance, tremendous grief mm -hmm. can be the same 
can do the same thing. They're not always pleasant experiences. Um, the experience of tremendous loss. If you if you um, suddenly lose, uh, uh, but particularly suddenly because there's no preparation, although not necessarily suddenly, but but especially suddenly, if you lose someone who is very close to you, that it has such a profound effect that it just it it just shatters your mind. It brings your there's no way your mind can go. Yeah, it, it's impossible for the mind to accommodate the immensity of the experience within its accustomed framework. So it just shatters the mind. It brings the mind to an end. And in that pause, in that space, there can sometimes be this recognition. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are many such... Um, but I, it felt so uh, obvious. It was like a 2D image of a cubus. And then at one point, you it looks like... A, hollow and then it's protruding like y this yes, flip yes. and uh, when you look at such an image it's so easy to see to switch between both uh, yes. um, impressions but in that case uh, it's, it seems like the mind's preferring the one uh, yes but, so but, you, but you said um, it only lasted briefly because the body couldn't take it I would suggest it, it wasn't the body that couldn't take it I would suggest it was the, the separate self in you. Mm -hmm. The separate self in you realized, if, if I spend any more time, well, the separate self was absent in this experience, but the separate self came back very quickly and realized that it had been ousted and that there was no place for it in this new reality. So the yeah. separate, come, separate self comes back with a vengeance to reassert itself because it realizes it, it has been dealt a mortal blow by this experience mm -hmm. and that if you have too many more of those experiences it's going to be out of business it, it, it's sure, there's no place yeah. so the separate self comes back and reasserts itself but usually you go towards uh, pleasure and away from pain and that uh, moment was uh, very positive kind of because it was really uh, before I mean normally I feel uh, mortal and uh, full of fear and insecurity And in that moment, I felt immutable and um, beyond um, beyond anything. So why is the the psyche or whatever going back to the painful state? <clears throat> just the the strength of habit, just okay. that 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 one powerful but brief glimpse of your true nature is not enough to put an end to decades of habitual thinking and feeling on behalf of the separate self. It, it, it mortally wounds the separate self. You can never go back to yourself the way you are. That experience will, even if you turned away from it, it would disturb you, for, you haven't turned away from it, but if you had turned away, it would disturb you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So in, in your case, you, you, you then consciously began to, ex to, to take yourself back there consciously. Mm -hmm. But... Um, It's the, for, it's the force of habit. We, we, we've all been rehearsing the separate self for, for decades. It takes okay. more, a, a, except for very rare exceptions. Ramana Maharshi was one, he's in fact the only one that, I, that I've ever heard of. Except for very rare cases, um, there, there may be others. The, it, one, one recognition is not enough. Yeah. Now, occasion, very occasion it is, but in most cases, a brief glimpse And then the old habit of thinking and feeling comes back. And the brief glimpse is often given free of charge. It's like a free gift from God. And then thereafter, we have to find our way back. It's like God has given us a sample of itself, which is free, unsolicited, no effort on our part. We, don't have to, we, we, we may not have had any interest in these matters at all. We're just given these, this free sample, and then it is taken away. It's not really taken away. It's just the old habits come back again. And then it's as if God says to us, okay, I have revealed myself to you. Now I have disappeared again. It, it's your job to find me. And yeah. that's, that's the spiritual path. And that's what you're uh, helping us with. And that's what the teaching. That's yeah. what the teaching is, is um, and that's why when we hear the teaching, uh, 
we don't feel that some new knowledge is being given to us. Some new explanation may be given to us, but the, the knowledge that is contained, the understanding that is contained in, in the information always feels like a recognition. Oh, yes, okay, now you've explained it, but I always knew that. <coughs> Yeah. So that the teaching always awakens something, reawakens in us something that we already knew but that we had overlooked. That's why there's something, you get this deep yes inside. And you what hear. is in the way when we are sitting here in the morning and looking at ourselves and uh, but this kind of flip or shift is not happening? Is there something in the way to it? It's it's the, yeah. the the old habit of thinking and feeling. Sometimes it 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 um, comes to an end very abruptly, yeah. as in the kind of experience you described. But sometimes it fades slowly. Okay. So, uh, I might say something like, um, "As you feel yourself sinking more and more deeply into being." So okay. to begin with, when we come in in the mornings, we're we're all full of thoughts and feelings and sensations and perceptions and. We rarely go directly from there all the way back to our true nature. It's a fit, just like falling asleep. You don't normally get into bed and fall deeply asleep straight away. You get into bed, you relax, you let go of your perceptions, you let go of your sensations, you let go of your images, you let go. And over a period of time, you end up in, in deep sleep. Well, meditation is the same thing. You sink. Remember Rumi, we float down and down and down in ever-widening rings of being, we sink more and more and more deeply into ourselves.